Um, welcome to the 2022 New Jersey Self-Direction Conference on um, self-direction in real life, in real time. And I want to um, thank our two guests, Anthony Vasquez and Steve Grislavik, uh, for joining us. Um, they were so generous to spend some time uh, with me and with you talking about um, their lives in self-direction and real life and in real time and what their thoughts are about, about it. So, um, so Anthony, let's just um, go ahead and let's just start with you. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, go ahead. Um, my name is Anthony Vasquez. Um, I'm 33 years old. Um, I live in Trenton, New Jersey. I was born in Trenton, New Jersey. Um, I'm diagnosed with spastic cerebral palsy, and I've been self-directing since 2007. And um, I'm I'm very um, very well spoken, and um, I'm glad that I can give everybody my experience doing this for so many years. <laughs> I think Steve, how about you? Can you tell us a little bit about yourself too? Uh, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Kozlavik. I'm from Robbinsville, uh, New Jersey, which is in Mercer County. Uh, actually, not too far from Anthony. Um, I have spastic quadriplegic cerebral palsy. Uh, I'm a permanent wheelchair user, um, and uh, I, you know, serve several roles. I'm a legislative uh, business and disability consultant, um, and I help families uh, use self-direction principles and advise businesses and do a whole bunch of other uh, organizational tasks. Um, yeah, and I've been I've been self-directing uh, probably since I was 18 years old. I'm 32. All right. Um, so you both have shared with me already how long you, you have been self-directing your services. Um, tell me a little bit, can you describe uh, what self-direction looks like for you now? Like what, are, what, how, what, how are you self-directing? What services do you self-direct? Just tell us a little bit more about that. I'll go first. Sure. Uh, well, I've been self. Um, well, I've been getting home health aid help since around that time, um, and uh, everything like with COVID has slowed everything down. But um, I'm still uh, doing as much as I possibly can, um, and. I've been using the services um, for lots of things, um, for uh, searching for a job, and I, w I went to college for uh, four years for uh, IT technology and cybersecurity diagnostics. Um, so, and it's, it's uh, very liberating because I get to um, do a lot of things on my own without um, assistance from my mom or anything like that. I can just go do whatever I want. And um, uh, hang out with friends and such. So it's very good. Yeah, I think... Um uh, having a disability overall, uh, once you're once you're finally able to accept that it's not going to change, I think uh, self direction and using self directing principles uh, is probably one of the most liberating things you can do for yourself uh, because it's all about personal choice of what yes. the individual wants. Um, I get to choose who I have help me in my home. Uh, I get to choose what program they're under. Uh, I, I get to negotiate with them 
as far as like how much they're paid. You know, and I get I get to make sure that they're well taken care of too. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and uh, I get to choose what services uh, I I like to use. Uh, I get to choose what transportation I like to use, or you know, um, what uh, you know accessible equipment I want in my house to help me. Um, I get to make choices of what I get to do with my day. Um, you know, um, so I think, I think, yes, um, you know, when you have to live on Medicaid programs, uh, yes, there are a lot of rules and regulations that you have to follow, uh, but by using self-directing principles, um, you can um, make your life a little bit easier and a little bit more free and as independent as possible. Yes. And um, for me, um, like going to school, it would have been a little difficult for my mom to like physically take me because number one, um, she works. And like number two, I'm a little bit um, heavy for her. So somebody, somebody that can like, uh, like physically lift me up and be able to um, take me wherever I have to go, whether it's school or the store or anything like that. Um, it's great. And you could explain to them, you know, I, I like things this way. I don't like it that way. Or um, just um, you could give them your point of view of how you like everything done. Sarah, um, was there a time before you were, you were actually self-directing your services or have you always been self-directing your services? I always, um, like at first I didn't, um, when I first got out of high school, like I didn't understand how everything worked. And then so like, um, they sat down with me and like explained to me how everything worked. And then once I got the hang of it, um, I did everything on my own. Yeah, there, there. Uh, before I found out about self-direction and, and the principles of self-direction and how you could really use it to, you know, change your life, um, I had a really difficult life. Uh, I, I wasn't independent. Uh, I was dependent on others. Yeah, me too. Uh, I, li I lived in a house that was not accessible. Uh, you know, uh, I I had a lot of issues. Uh, it caused it caused a lot of family tension. Um, you know, and uh, here I am. I go to I go to college, eight hours away from my house, and then all of a sudden I go home, and I'm, you know, you feel very trapped and confined. Um, so I, I dealt with that for a really, really long time. And then I eventually went to an independent living center um, who helped me find an apartment and find a job. Uh, you know, and I've been living on my own ever since. But before before I found self-direction, it, it was very difficult. Uh, and we, we are by no means saying that this is the end-all, be-all, and this, this is the program that you use for everybody. And that this is this is easy. When you first start this and you you set this up, this is not easy at all. Um, there are a lot of there are a lot of difficult decisions um, that have to be made. But you know the the good part about self direction is let's say you make a decision that doesn't work for you or your family, uh, you have the ability to change it without a lot of interference. Uh, if you choose to go another route, um, I know several families go with guardianship, but if you choose to go with guardianship and you want to change something, it's very difficult. Uh -huh. uh, and it takes years. Um, you know, and, and uh, I help families that go both ways, either guardianship or self-direction. But uh, I'm, I'm a firm believer that 98% of the population doesn't need guardianship. 
I agree. If you, if, if you use self-direction principles, uh, you should be able to, uh, you know, create an environment and create a life that is very fulfilling for the individual that you're helping to support. I agree. Um, you know, and I, I'm not here. I'm not here to judge anyone or tell anyone what to do. Because at the end of the day, everybody has to live their own life, right? But, you know, um, it, it, if you really want the most productive life for your family member, you have to have the freedom to make choices. And yeah. Change them when it goes wrong. Yeah. And, you know, it's okay to make mistakes because, you know, nobody in this world is perfect. <clears throat> so if you make a couple mistakes, you know, don't fret it. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. If you if you don't make mistakes, then there's a problem. Yeah. And, um, you know, if you don't if you don't realize that hey something didn't work out so well or there may be another option, um, you're you're not trying hard enough. Honestly, that kind of brings me. It makes me think about something you had said earlier, uh, Steve, when we were talking. You talked about how you know oftentimes people with disabilities. The people around them who care and love love them always kind of always want to put them like I don't know like wrap them in plastic or you know <laughs> put them in bubble wrap. What yeah. do you think about that? Yeah, uh, I I am by no means saying that uh, we need to let people go out and play in the street and go out and run out on their own. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a concept called dignity of risk, um, and 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 uh, it's it's a part of educating an individual uh, and taking it step by step so they're able to do things more independently. Um, for instance, if they want if they want to cross the street, okay, you don't just let them go out there and cross the street, but you take them step by step. Okay, this is how you get off the porch and this is how you go towards the grass. And this is how you get off the curb. And you know when you go to cross the street, look both ways and make sure a car's not going to hit you. You know, but if you if you take things and break it down into smaller pieces, uh, you'd be amazed how much people can attain uh, and the independent living skills that they gain by doing that. Um, but it does it does take a lot of trial and error. Um, you know, and and uh, as as parents and families, uh, we don't want to let our loved ones fail. Uh, yes. But I think I think some of the most valuable life lessons have been learned from individual failures. Exactly. And, and yes, 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 it's painful. But as long as you're there to support them and pick them up, uh, you know, then then it, it's fine. I'm by no I'm by no means saying, OK, go out and put them out there and leave them by themselves and see what they do. No. It has to be done in a, in a uh, constructed, well thought out, and planned way. Yeah, I agree. And what what you said, Javier, about how some people feel like they want to wrap their loved ones in plastic. Well, I understand where you're coming from because, like, there's a stigma that if you're uh, handicapped in any way that you know, you you basically don't know what you're doing. And that's definitely not true because, you know, we we know what we're doing. We just might need a little bit of help. And that stigma needs to stop. And people need to realize that um, we want to live our lives to the fullest, just like everyone else, yeah. that we deserve a chance just like everybody else. And um, I believe that with self-help, self-help uh, services and things like that, slowly but surely, uh, I believe that stigma is going to change. Yeah. And, and, and um, your, your vision for your uh, child or your loved one might not be their actual vision for their life. Yeah, uh, and, and 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 you have to wrestle and grapple with that as an individual. And and the the minute the minute that we start moving towards, okay, what 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 is going to be the best determinant for 
their life and what they want, uh, you know, the easier it's going to be and the happier everybody in the family is going to be. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that you should go and let them walk on a tightrope with the windows, okay? <laughs> but they they may they may enjoy something about that production, like lighting or uh, you know coordinating the stunt or doing uh, marketing or press release. But they, you know, they don't, I, I I don't want families to be dream crushers because um, that that happens a lot. The dream crushers? Is that what yeah. you Yeah. Yeah. I don't want I don't I don't want families to be dream killers. Um because you know what they, they might not be able to engage in some sort of physical or intellectual activity, but there may be some ways around it that you can you could see that they could enjoy and gain some value out of it. Right. Um right. you know, I think, I think that's important. And as and as for me, um I kind of knew in high school that I always wanted to do something that had to do with computers because I've always loved technology. And I remember years ago, I told my high school teacher, um, you know, I want to do something with computers. And she basically told me that I couldn't do it because, you know, my hands are not too good. But when people tell you things like that, you have to be determined. Be like, I don't really care what people say, you know, um, I'm going to do it anyway. And that was my attitude. And as of now, as a side job, I uh, repair computers and uh, cell phones and things like that from home. Yeah. People often ask me, how can I, how can I make my child or my sibling or my relative more independent? I think I think the first thing is to to build resiliency. Hmm. Um, that's that's important. Yeah. Uh, because you know I I enjoy proving people wrong. Uh, hmm. I I I get a thrill out of it. Right. Uh, you know uh, because I I've had so many people tell me no in my life. No, you can't do that. And then when I'm finally able to do it, it might not be the way that they intended for me to do it, but I can still accomplish whatever they wanted me to do, um, you know, and, and we have, we have to look at things from a different framework uh, a lot of times, you know, what would you say, what would you guys say um, to, to people who's like, well, you know, well, Anthony and Steve, clearly you guys can, you guys can articulate what you want. You know, people understand you when you speak, you know, um, Mike, you know, does that is that that's not the case with lots of people who have you know different disabilities and you know they they they're not self direction can't possibly be for them. What do you, what do you have to say about that? Um. Well, they they might not be able to do um certain things, but still you have to um put them in situations that they're gonna be able to live their life as as best as possible that's the most important thing and, because, and good, good. Yeah. Be, be, because whether you're a, a parent or a loved one you know you take care of them you want them to live their life as best as possible so um they might not be able to uh articulate things or understand what's going on but just um it's a fig figure it out as you go type of thing. And um, I think that is the best way to to do it. Yeah, just, just because just because your loved one or individual can't articulate their point of view in a, in a typical way um, doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have a point of view that they'd like to express. They might just express it differently. <coughs> um, and the people that are going to be around them Supporting them need to be able to understand that. Um, just, just you know, uh, gone are the days when people can't communicate, and they, because they can't communicate, they no longer have a choice. Uh, you still have a choice. There's a hundred different adaptive ways that somebody could communicate. Um, so I'm not, I'm not really 
uh, too fond of people who say, oh, they, they can't communicate, so they must not have an opinion, um, you know, because they do have an opinion. And it's probably stronger than most of ours. Yeah. <laughs> they, they just don't give them the chance yeah. to speak for themselves. They just basically put them in a corner and just leave them there. And, like, don't let them express themselves. Yeah. Um, so, you guys talked about self-direction being liberating. Um, not It doesn't happen overnight. Like, you don't find all the answers overnight. Um, so, that makes me think about, you know, in terms of your experience, what has been the hardest part of, of self-directing your about self direct or about self directing your service. What has been the hardest part, and um, what what support have you received or have you developed over time to let to um, help you self direct the way you want to self direct? Um, I'll go first. Um, well, for me, the hardest thing for me was looking for somebody that was gonna, you know. Uh, be able to fulfill my needs because, you know, not everybody's going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, mm. And sometimes the person the person that you're working with might think that they'll be able to help you, but it turns out that, you know, one way or another, they're not able to help you. So you just, um, that's been the hardest part for me is like having to figure out is this going to work out or not um because a, a couple times it has happened to me that certain situations happen and it, you know it it doesn't work out i i think you are you refer, you're referring to what you had shared with me previously like when you have to, when you invite somebody to come and work for you, you it, pays, it, it, it requires, you have to be very, it, you're very vulnerable, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry, you, should, you're, you have to be very vulnerable when you, when you hire somebody because they have to help you in really intimate ways. So that's a hard, you had shared with me, that's a really hard part about it um, and having to ex experience that and, and, and go through that. Yeah, because a lot of times, since it's so intimate, you know, not every not every person wants to help you mm. in that situation. Mm -hmm. So it, that's the part that, like, you have to see if it's going to work out. Because if they're not going to be able to help you in that situation, then it serves no purpose. What, um, Steve, in terms of you, I mean, so this was this, I guess, I think um, Anthony was talking about hiring people and, and how um, that, 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 you know, kind of that being vulnerable that way is a really hard part. What, what other things um, in terms of self-direction have been challenging or would you say were one of the hardest, hardest parts for you? I, I think I agree with Anthony. Uh, the the hiring of people to help you and support you uh, is is very very difficult. Um, they help you with some of those intimate aspects of your life. Mm -hmm. um, they're involved in your life on an everyday basis, um, and for whatever reason, when they decide to leave for whatever reason, uh, it makes it very difficult to form just general relationships in your life as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I I also think. Some of the regulations that we have to follow within the state programs, mm -hmm. uh, right. as far as how we could spend the budget um, for our needs, um, and 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 what, how and what we can pay for, um, make it really difficult to self-direct as well. Um, you know, and the way the ways in which they have to do it are kind of quirky, um, and not your average ways. Like if you need a home modification. It's really difficult. Yes. Uh, you know, or if you need transportation, it's extremely difficult. Um, these are these are things that people shouldn't have to think about. But unfortunately, because we're disabled, we have to. So that, that makes it kind of difficult. I understand there's a need for safety, policy, and procedure and regulation. 
But I really do think, you know, when it comes to self-direction, um, the purpose of a self-directed life is to determine what you need uh, and spend the budget how you see fit. Um, and as long as you're getting your needs met, um, you know, within reason, it, it, it shouldn't matter how you get the job done. Yes. Can stand in the so way. So what about in so terms of um, decisions and planning? Have um, Do you have people around you or loved ones around you that act that help you make decisions or consider, you know, what, um, how, do you, how to plan and run your services? Yeah, I, I have, a, um, you know, I don't do this alone. Um, I could pretty make, much make a lot of the decisions myself, um, but I, I'm surrounded by a team of people. I have, you know, a great support coordinator. Um, I think that that's really key and that's vital. Uh, I think it's also very important um, to have uh, financial planning, especially as you get older in life. Uh -huh. uh, I also think it's important that that you, you know, acquire some legal representation sometimes um, because they they don't make this life easy. Um, you know, uh, and I have tremendous uh, friends that are there, you know, for me to talk to if I have a problem or a situation that I can, you know, speak with them about. But for the most part, I can make the decision myself, but it's always nice to have those people to fall back on and kind of guide me. Yeah, Anthony. That, that, that's true what he's saying, because I've found out through these past couple of years that things that I used to be able to do are uh, a little bit difficult for me now that I'm a little bit older. So that part, I agree that as you age, you're possibly going to need more help than you did before. So that's good to keep that there just in case, you know? Yeah, and I, I, I found that um, for mine and Anthony's case, I don't know about Anthony, but for people with cerebral palsy, you know, we're not we're not supposed to decline like typical other disorders. We're, we're supposed to pretty much plateau and then maintain throughout our life. But I find that as I get older, yeah, I do need a little bit more help with things. Yeah, me, and, me too. And and, and that becomes that becomes difficult to acquire the services when when there is so much um, red tape in place. Yeah, and it's like um, basically when you need them, those things, it's like going through a maze. Yeah. Um, and you know that's, that's the hard that's, part. I know a lot. I know a lot of people that are not in the service system, but they could use services, but they would rather just you know sit at home and suffer, uh, which I I don't like. But they 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 say I don't want to go through the regulation because it's too hard. You know. Yeah. That kind of goes to my next question that I was going to ask you guys is like if you if um, for all the people for all the other you know self advocates or uh, people who who you know are um, who have um, uh, developmental disabilities out there who might be listening what what would you say to them right now in terms about uh, self direction? That is a very 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 hard process. And but just keep the faith and hang in there. That as the years go by, it'll be much easier. Yeah, and it, it is a it is a very challenging uh, endeavor. Uh, but nothing in life that was ever rewarding uh, didn't come without a challenge. Uh, so you know, it it is very difficult. Uh, there are times when you do get low and. Do get depressed, um, but you know if you could if you could just um, keep keep the faith and realize that it is going to get better, and uh, you are going to be able to make your own choices. Um, you know, it, it makes it a lot easier. Um, go ahead, Anthony. Um, for me, um, that was a problem for me that I would get a little depressed because. 
I just, um, I wanted everything done fast, but <laughs> as I've gotten older, I've learned to like, you know, take your time, take it slow and, um, don't give up whatever you do. If you're, if you're disabled and not patient, you're in for a lot of trouble because you're going to learn patience or you're going to suffer. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um. What are your? Tell me a little bit about what your, um, what your, what your next goals are in life, and how are you utilizing self direction, both in terms of paid services and the non paid stuff, and the, your natural supports and things like that. What are what what steps are you taking in your life? Well, for me, um, my ultimate dream in my life is to basically open my own computer shop. Mm -hmm. and um make my income through there uh and doing doing anything that has to do with technology because it's what i love is it, um i'm great at it so um but what i do to for the future is um right now i repair computers for people from home and um, I get paid for it. And um, I speak two languages. I speak English and Spanish so I can help people that speak both languages. So it helps me with uh, my communication skills better. Yeah, I think uh, my goals for the future um, is to see the workability bill uh, be implemented and become a reality for people, uh, and to open to open the uh, floodgates to competitive employment. Uh, I plan um, to continue to consult for businesses and legislature and, and families. Um, you know, I'm going to attach my contact information to this presentation. So if anybody has any questions, uh, I know we have a short time for questions at the end of this thing, um, but please feel free to reach out and contact me because I want to help as many people as I can. Um, you know, because I've been through it. It's very difficult. And if you go through it alone, it's going to be very, very hard. Um, but event eventually, I eventually want to own my own home Mm -hmm. um, and, and not at the rent. Um, and, you know, uh, and continue to live as independent of life as I possibly can. That's fantastic. Um, and I would. Anthony, go ahead. <clears throat> um, I, I, same thing. Uh, I'll leave my uh, information if anybody want to ask me questions. Um, that's totally fine with me. Um, and I think that it's a good thing that we're doing this because I wish that somebody was around to tell me what to look out for when I was first starting to do this. Yeah. And not feel so um, confused and kind of frightened. Um, you know, that. I wish that somebody was there to like basically tell me what to expect. And, um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I do what I do. Yeah. We're here. We're here to be a guiding light for others. Um, we're not, that's, we're not necessarily here to tell you what to do with your life. Uh, we don't want to do that, but if we could, if we could guide you in the right direction to where you want to go, um, that, that would be wonderful. Well, I've certainly, um, every time I talk to both of you, I always learn something and I appreciate <laughs> it very much. Uh, it enriches my life just as a person. It enriches my life as a professional, just to know you guys. Um, and, uh, and to know that we are, we really are all in this together, uh, when it comes to, to, um, to making self-direction a reality for people, you know, but just kind of making life better for, Everyone, right? Yeah. 
you know so uh i want to thank you oh just one is there any any last any additional word that you want to share well to anybody that wants to be a self-advocate my last word for you is keep the faith hang in there don't give up no matter what happens in life don't give up because um you're your own champion and um you know your abilities and just don't give up don't tap out basically i i i've been successful in this life because i've done things differently uh i went i went against what the conventional society says uh so when one door closes i kick another one down uh, and and uh, you know you have to you have to really keep the spirit. Um, that's that's really really important. Keeping the spirit and keeping the faith, and realizing that it will get better. Um, and that 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 you know you best. Um, so don't let anybody tell you no or that you can't do it. Because uh, if I listen if I listen to all those people that told me that I couldn't do something. I wouldn't be where I am now. That goes for me too. Well, thanks again, um, Anthony and Steve. Uh, again, everybody, this is Anthony Vasquez and Steve uh, Grislavik, um, who have um, we spent a little time with today. Um, their information is going to be in the chat. They are they welcome any uh, questions, um, and I. Um, thank you for joining us, everybody, and um, we look forward to to working with all of you in the future. Yeah, and if, if if people have a longer question or a personal question they would like to ask, uh, if they could just leave their information in the chat, uh, Anthony and myself would be more than happy to respond to them. Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. It's a pleasure being here. <laughs> bye bye.